Hey guys, this is Dr. Rajeshwar from YR PharmaTube. Previously, we discussed the sedative hypnotics and antipsychotics, which are the drugs acting on the central nervous system. If you did not watch the videos, hit the i button on top right of this video to watch the entire playlist. To watch the other subjects of pharmaceutical sciences, click on the links given right below this video. In this lesson, you will be introduced the other type of drugs acting on the central nervous system that is anticonvulsants, their introduction, classification, structures and mechanism of action. Anticonvulsants are the drugs that are used for the management of convulsive disorders. A convulsion is a medical condition where the body muscles contract and relax rapidly and repeatedly resulting in uncontrolled shaking. Convulsion is a common term generally describing uncontrollable muscle contraction. The word convulsion is often interchangeable with the word seizure, so both the words have the same meaning. Seizures may cause a person to have convulsions, but this is not always the case. Convulsion is a type of seizure that involves bursts of electrical activity in the brain. Occasionally, the reason for the convulsion is not known. A convulsion may be caused by illness, a reaction to a medication or other medical conditions. Sometimes the word fit is used for a convulsion or an epileptic seizure. Thus, anticonvulsants are also known as anti-seizure drugs. Anticonvulsants are also known as anti-epileptic drugs abbreviated AEDS because anticonvulsants are used in the management of epilepsy disease. The term epilepsy was first used by Hippocrates and is based on the Greek word epilambanin meaning to seize, possess or afflict. Epilepsy is a brain disorder in which clusters of nerve cells or neurons in the brain sometimes signal abnormally. In epilepsy, the normal pattern of neuronal activity becomes disturbed causing strange sensations, emotions and behavior or sometimes convulsions muscle spasms and loss of consciousness. Epilepsy is a chronic disease that is characterized by paroxysmal attacks caused by pathologic excitation of cerebral neurons. It is accompanied by various degrees of disturbance of consciousness. There are both convulsive and non-convulsive forms of epileptic attacks, each of which is characterized by distinctive clinical features. Moreover, there are specific changes in the electroencephalogram for practically all forms of epilepsy. Seizures are generated in the epileptogenic center of the brain and can be nothing more than shaking of the extremities. If the convulsive discharge begins to spread and the excitation encompasses both hemispheres of the brain, seizures begin. Discharges induce major epileptic convulsive seizures known as a grand mal and minor epileptic attacks are known as petit mal. Generally speaking, seizures are involuntary muscle contractions that can take place as a result of pathologic processes both inside and outside of the brain. They can occur in response to toxins, trauma, hyperthermia, medicinal overdose or upon discontinuation of medication. The first effective anticonvulsant was potassium bromide introduced by the British gynecologist Charles Lowcock in 1857 who used bromide to treat women with hysterical epilepsy. The bromide was largely replaced by phenobarbitone in 1912 when Hauptmann tried this sedative drug in epilepsy. Its great value was organized at once and it is still commonly prescribed. The usefulness of both bromide and phenobarbitone in convulsive disorders was discovered by chance that is serendipitously but phenytoin was developed in 1937 as the result of a study of potential anti-epileptic drugs in animal models by Tracy Putman and H. Houston Merritt. Bromide is highly effective in humans and is relatively non-sedating drug. Treatment of convulsive disorders using bromide, phenobarbitone and phenytoin constitute an important advance in the clinical therapy. Many of the standard anticonvulsants that contain the ureide structure are shown here in the picture. They have been used clinically for more than 30 years without much change in their ureide structures. 
small changes in the x substituent of the ureoid structure as shown in the figure can cause significant changes in the type of seizures controlled which will be discussed for each of the respective drugs as a result of rapid developments in molecular biological techniques for the study of the neurophysiology of epilepsy and in the interactions of anticonvulsants with neurotransmitters at ion channels or brain receptors a new generation of clinically available anticonvulsants has emerged these anticonvulsants include felbamate gabapentin lamotrigine levotiracetam oxycarbazepine tiagabine topiramate and zonisamide their mechanism of action are targeted toward ion channels and brain receptors either by enhancing brain gaba activity or by inhibiting excitatory amino acids these new generation anticonvulsants also inhibit limited drug interactions with fewer adverse effects a rational approach to the drug discovery process is necessary to develop new leads to novel effective therapy and to use structure activity relationships to fine tune the pharmacology of existing anticonvulsants with the same or better efficacy and fewer adverse effects approximately 60% of patients with epilepsy become seizure free with monotherapy using first line drugs such as carbamazepine benzodiazepines such as clonazepam and diazepam etosuximide or phenytoin alternative monotherapy drugs include phenobarbitone and primidone another 20% of patients who have epilepsy controlled by the addition of a second anticonvulsant called adjunct drugs for example felbamate gabapentin lamotrigine levotiracetam oxcarbazepine tiagabine topiramate valproic acid and zonisamide despite recent advances in neurobiology and significant insight regarding the molecular dysfunction of epilepsy the remaining 20% of patients don't completely respond to the current first line therapeutic drugs and most often are prescribed more than two anticonvulsants without any obvious benefit Recently much effect has been made to discover new anticonvulsants effective in refractory seizures and partial complex seizures however no drug has been shown in human trials to prevent epileptogenesis that is the drug development of epilepsy in an individual at risk such as after a head injury which means anti seizure medications suppress seizures but don't cure or prevent epilepsy Anticonvulsants are a diverse group of agents which are of seven major groups. Number 1 barbiturates which include phenobarbitone, methyl phenobarbital and barbexaclone. Number 2 hydantoins which are phenytoin, mephenytoin, ethotoin and phosphenytoin. Number 3 oxazolidine dienes such as paramethadione, trimethadione and ethadione. Number 4 pyrimidine dienes which contain primidone. Number 5 succinimides that consists of ethosuximide, fensoximide and misoximide. Number 6 benzodiazepines like clobazam, clonazepam, clorazepate, diazepam, midazolam, lorazepam, nitrazepam, temazepam and nimetazepam. And number 7 miscellaneous agents. Several miscellaneous anticonvulsant agents are aldehydes, aromatic allyl alcohols, bromides, carbamates carboxamides fatty acids fructose derivatives the list is continued to the next page propionates pyrrolidines sulfonamides triazines ureas valproylamides and others the examples of drugs in each category have been given in the figure the details of each type of these drugs will be discussed in the later videos here are the structures of barbiturates phenobarbitone methyl phenobarbital methorbital and barbexaclone hydantoins include phenytoin mephenytoin ethotoin and phosphenytoin paramethadione trimethadione and ethadione are oxazolidine dienes and primidone is pyrimidine dione succinimides are ethosuximide fensoximide and mesoximide the structures of all the benzodiazepines are given here The structures of important miscellaneous agents have been given here. You can pause the video to note down the structures. Non-pharmaceutical anticonvulsants. 
the ketogenic diet and vagus nerve stimulation are alternative treatments for epilepsy without the involvement of pharmaceuticals. However, both of them can cause severe adverse effects. The adverse effects of vagus nerve stimulation are more severe and its efficacy is questionable in comparison to medications or the ketogenic diet. The mechanisms of action of anticonvulsant drugs fall into three major categories. The first mechanism is to limit the sustained repetitive firing of neurons, an effect mediated by promoting the inactivated state of voltage-activated sodium ion channels. The second mechanism appears to involve enhancing GABA-mediated synaptic inhibition, an effect mediated either by a presynaptic or postsynaptic action. Drugs effective against the most common forms of epileptic seizures, partial secondarily generalized tonic-clonic seizures appear to work by one of these two mechanisms. Drugs effective against absence of seizures, a less common form of epileptic seizure work by a third mechanism that is the inhibition of voltage activated calcium ion channels responsible for T-type calcium ion currents. Although many treatments are available, much effort is being devoted to elucidating the genetic causes and the cellular and molecular mechanisms by which a normal brain becomes epileptic insights that promise to provide molecular targets for both the symptomatic and preventive therapies. This is the list of references followed for the lesson. That's all in this video, an introduction to anticonvulsant drugs. In the next lesson, we will discuss the first type of anticonvulsants that is barbiturates. Till then, never stop learning and never stop watching my videos. Thank you for watching this video.